Hello friends, today we are going to test this theory if the electricity can flow through water. For the experiment I have prepared these two copper pieces that I will put right here in this little jar and I will put some water here to test if the electricity can flow through the water. For safety purposes I'm going to use voltage up to 30 volts. Please don't repeat this experiment because you know electricity can be very dangerous. So I will clip one of the copper pieces with this alligator clip going from the power supply and the other lead I will connect to the multimeter so we can measure what will be the voltage after I pour water in this little jar. Firstly I will set the power supply for roughly 10 volts and I will pour the water in the little jar now. As a starting point I will pour natural mineral water, it's a tap water that I bought from the local store and let's see what the multimeter will show after I pour the water in. Let's check if this is going to work with a lower voltage. Let's say we will set the power supply to 4.9 volts. It's actually going through this water and let's put this power supply up to 30 volts. We can see the voltage is flowing without any problem. Of course there is no consumption right here. But now we will test what will happen if we put a load in this circuit. Now I have connected this little LED. It's 12 volt rated. It, it's equipped with little resistor here under the heat shrink. Let's see how it's going to perform. This is just a small load, but I will test it later with a bigger load. I will use some DC motor. Let's increase the voltage up to 12 volts. Here we can see at 12 volts there is significant voltage drop. Here it shows only 6.7 volts. This means the water acts like a resistor in this circuit and this is why this little LED is shining just like it's powered up to 6 volts. Let's increase the voltage when it reaches 12 volts to see how it should emit a light at 12 volts. So we need 22 volts to actually make 12 volts to the LED and this is how it should work under normal circumstances. Now let's try this experiment with something bigger, this huge DC motor. Now we will test it how it's going to perform. As you can see here it's only 1.3 volts and this motor is not even moving at this voltage. You can see here there are bubbles in the jar because the current is trying to flow between the copper parts but the motor is still not running. Now I will put some baking soda to electrolyte this uh, water and trying to move the motor. So let's pour the baking soda now and observe the voltage here. Now I will have to turn the voltage down a little bit because you can see there are voltage and the motor is starting to spin faster and faster. Now the current is only 0.1 and the voltage is only 9 volts, almost 10 volts, but the motor is spinning. I will try to increase this voltage a little bit more. You can see there is significant voltage drop and this water it's still acting like current resistor. You can see what's going on in the jar right now. Well friends, you can see the water is actually conductive but it's way more conductive if we use baking soda or salt 